When you were here before, you couldn't look you in the eye. You're just like an angel. Your skin makes me cry. You float like a feather in a beautiful world. I wish I was special. Hi guys, so good evening and welcome back to my magical world. Uh, I am, if you are new here, <laughs> I just want to introduce myself. I am Frostbite and what I do is, what I do here is that I read for you anything that is, you know, um, interesting. And uh, of course, I also do some entertainment. I'm sure you, uh, most of you, uh, watch it already, like my TikToks and all of that. So, yeah. I uh today we'll have a bit long it's it's a bit long for me it's a bit long discussion but yeah let's proceed currently it's 6 35 in the evening so today is the pink full moon um april 16 2022 you know i have to say that because i'm tracking here i'm tracking things here in my channel like if there's anything that i wanted to, to be reminded of okay so today we'll talk about the six powerful psychological effects that explain how our brain brains tick, okay? So understanding the psychology behind the way we tick might help us to tick even better. Many studies and much research has been invested into the how and why behind our everyday actions and interactions. The results are revealing if you are looking for a way to supercharge your personal development, understanding the psychology behind our actions is an essential first part or step. Yeah. Fortunately, knowing is half the battle when you realize all the many ways in which our minds create perceptions, weigh decisions, and subconsciously operate. You can see the psychological advantages start to take shape. It's like a backstage pass to the way we work and being backstage, ex wait lang guys, because it's a bit noisy. Wait a second. Guys, it's pretty much, it's a bit loud. So, uh, I'll continue like in a bit, okay? But I'll save this for now, but I'll continue in a bit. So, just a continuation later. Okay, so the noise is gone, guys. So let's continue. So, fortunately, knowing is half the battle when you really realize all the many ways in which our minds create perceptions weigh decisions and subconsciously operate you can see the psychological advantages start to take shape it's like a backstage pass to the way we work and being backstage you have an even greater understanding of what it takes to succeed the following six psychological facts can be viewed as a hawker's guide to self-improvement based on the brain's default settings. So that's exactly what this is, your backstage pass to how our brain functions and, and how we can best avoid common misconceptions. So, so um, it's amazing how our brain works, right? And we as a human being um, must learn how to operate so that we can utilize everything that is in here like especially our brain guys right so uh, we wanted to so of course we wanted to work in harmony with with the universe and with the people that we um what do you call this uh, collaborate ourselves with right so uh, this is like a trick and this is a gift also to you because i read it for you guys <laughs> because i know guys that you are lazy and i am too there's no guilt in that that's why i read for you guys so we are all in here together to learn right so and it's not like an hour thing so it's easy to subscribe <laughs> subscribe guys <laughs> okay so first of that six psychological effects that explain our brains is the first one is the prat fall effect so what does that mean um, I will elaborate it because I know I told you this is a bit long. Practical effect: your likability will increase if you aren't perfect. Okay, so don't worry about tripping and falling in front of your boyfriend. Doing so will only make him like you more. Go ahead and admit your failures to your friends. 
your humanness will endear yourself to them. This mistakes a track charm as a result of the Pratt fall effect. Those who never make mistakes are per perceived as less likable than those who commit the occasional fox pass. Is it? I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. But yeah, <laughs> messing up draws people closer to you, makes you more human, perfection creates distance, and an attractive air of invincibility. So, it's a trick, right? It's amazing. Perfection creates distance and an, an attractive air of invincibility. Those of, us, those of us with flaws win out every time. This theory was tested by the psychologist Elliot Aronson. In his test, he asked participants to listen to recordings of people answering a quiz. Select recordings included the sound of the person knocking over a cup of coffee. When participants were asked to rate the quizzers on likability, the coffee spill group came out on top. So the key takeaway for this is that the prep Pratfall effect serves as a good reminder that it is okay to be fallible. Fallible? Fallible? Fallible. Occasionally, mistakes are not only to, to... Occasionally, mistakes are not only acceptable but may turn out to be beneficial. So long as the mistakes are not critical and making mistakes does not compound a reputation for being unlike. The occasional pratfall can come in very handy pratfall way away. Okay, so um, as I've told you, we are like human human beings. So we are born a sinner, and we are born to make mistakes, to learn, to learn, and to navigate this life even better as we proceed to breathe every day and walk on our journey. Okay, so. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, guys. Just make sure that it's not critical. It's not harming, possibly harming anyone. Do not, let's not um, produce that kind of mistake. So, you know, the humanly mistake, like spilling coffee. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Next is the Pygmalion effect. Greater expectations drive greater performance. The cruise of the psychological phenomenon is the concept of self-fulfilling prophecy if you believe something is true of yourself eventually it will begin the first test of the pygmalion effect was performed by the psychologist by psychologist robert rosenthal and occurred in an elementary school classroom with first and second grade students at the beginning of the year all the students took an assessment test and the rosenthal led to the teachers to believe that certain students were capable of great academic achievement rosenthal chose these students at random regardless of the actual results of the iq tests at the end of the year when the students were Retested, the group of earmark high achievers did indeed show improvement over their peers. Why was this? Later tests concluded that the teacher subconsciously gave greater opportunities, attention, and feedback to the special group. So subconsciously, they, they absorbed it, they digested it. Their expectations for this group were higher and their expectations created the reality. Yeah, so that's why it's important to like to be in the positive side no matter, you know, their situations and uh, circumstances and experiences in our life. That even though we wanted so much, like myself, I really wanted something so much, but um, didn't get it yet, <laughs> yet. So I'm still positive that I'm going to get it like in the near future, probably in this year still. So uh, don't lose hope. I mean, expectation creates reality. So expect good, best, better, um, great, amazing stuff. So Rosenthal summarized his finding, what one person expects of another can come to serve as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Amazing. The effect was dubbed Pygmalion named after the Ovid tale of a sculptor who falls in love with one of his statues. Whoa, that's, that's something, right? Falling in love with your own statues. So key takeaway for this is the applications of the Pygmalion effect can have benefits for both personal development and leadership. Individually, you can challenge yourself with more difficult goals and tasks in an effort to rise to meet the challenge. 
as a leader, when you expect great things of your team, you may seem improved performance in return. So, learn to support, guide, so that you can ma navigate your team in a better, uh, in the best possible way, uh, way, and produce an amazing outcome. Next is the paradox. Par the paradox of choice, the more choices we have, the less likely we are to be content with our decision. So it only entails, so this is like just an analogy for that. Have you felt buyer's remorse? So if so, you have seen the paradox of choice in effect. So even if our ultimate decision is clearly correct when faced with many choices or options, we are less likely to be happy with what we choose. No doubt this is familiar to you when I eat out. I often second guess my menu choice. When you buy a new car, you might toss and turn over the decision. A wealth of choices makes finding contentment that much harder. To prove this paradox, psychologist, psychologist Mark Lepper and Sheena Liengar conducted an experiment on supermarket jam at a gourmet... Let's not read that, guys. Okay, it's not really important. It's just that, you know. Let's read the key takeaway for this is a simple solution to the paradox of choice is give yourself fewer options. A key to this is, ident is identified in the following except, excerpt, 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 excerpt from the Schwartz book. So, um, we all have like a lot of options, whether it comes to friendships, the lovers' relationships, buying food, Make sure to narrow it and um, get all the best and choose on the best options. Okay, so there, I know there are pool of um, opportunities, uh, people, friendships and all of that. So make sure and I do hope that you guys also pick like what is really the best for you. So narrow your choices, narrow it down. You must learn how to be picky but pick the best for you okay um focus on what makes you happy and do what gives uh meaning to your life next is the bystander effect the more people who see someone in need the less likely that person is to receive help the parable of the good samaritan illustrates this effect clearly so to so to do many tragic events throughout history researchers call it as a confusion of responsibility where individuals feel less responsibility for the outcome of an event when uh, others are around in fact the probability of health is inversely related to the number of the people present if you are to ever need assistance don't go looking for it in a crowd so like um on facebook yeah, it's it's a pool of people that could probably mess your reputation so don't do it there guys okay the bystander effect was shown in a study by social psychologist Bib Latane and John Darley they watched students respond to the perceived choking of a fellow student in a nearby cubicle when the test subjects felt they were the only other person there are 85% rush to help when the students felt that there was other person 65% help when the student felt that there were four other people, the percentage dropped to 31%. So, bystander effect likelihood... Ay, wait lang. <laughs> so, you may have experienced the bystander effect in a group project at school. There is often one group member who puts off deadlines and assignments because of, dif because of diffused responsibility. They assume someone else will pick up this lack. So, the key takeaway for this... Um, is be specific when you need help ask someone for help by name so as to remove the confusion of responsibility so be direct to that someone that's all i can say this is especially counterintuitive since we naturally assume saying to a larger larger group to help us will encourage more people to jump in when really the opposite is the case to avoid frustration pick out one person only every time so it's good if you have only that uh, ask help for that one specific person 
and don't put out your problems or you know errands to a, a lot of people whether that's a group message you know guys i hope you do know what i'm saying you guys are smart i know that so um as again still sharing your problems or asking for help like this should be uh, a sensitive matter and must be uh, asked with the right person next is the spotlight effect your mistakes are not noticed as much as okay next guys is the spotlight effect your mistakes are not noticed as much as you think the perception of our being under constant scrutiny is merely in our minds and the paranoia and self-doubt that we feel each time we make a mistake does not truly reflect reality according to the spotlight effect the people aren't paying attention at our moments of failure nearly as much as we think to test the spotlight effect a team of psychologists at cornell asked a group to of test subjects to wear an embarrassing t-shirt featuring a picture of Barry Manilow's face so and estimate how many people how many other people had noticed what they were they were wearing the estimation of the test subjects were twice as high as the actual number so yeah there's a paragraph uh, there's a graph here not paragraph a graph so the key takeaway for this is you are under the spotlight less often than you think acknowledging this should uh lead to increased comfortability and relaxation in public settings and more freedom to be yourself more so when you do make uh when you do make a mistake you can rest easy knowing that its impact is far less than you think so says the psychologist kenneth savitsky puts his, puts it this way you can completely eliminate the embarrassment you feel when you commit a fox pass, but it helps to know how much you're exaggerating its impact. Next is the focusing effect. People place too much importance on one aspect of an event and fail to recognize other factors. Nothing in life is as important as you think it is. While you are thinking about it, Daniel uh, Kahneman. How great is the difference in mood between someone who earns high income and someone who earns lower income? The difference does exist, but it is one-third uh, less significant than most people expect. This illustrates the focusing effect. In the income example, the factor of income as it um, relates to mood overshadows the myriad other circumstances at place. How much happier is a Californian than a Midwestern Westerner? The psychologist posed this question to residents of both areas. The answer from each group was that Californians must be considerably happy. The truth was that there was no difference. So between the actual happiness rating of Californians and Midwesterners, respondents were focusing on the sunny weather of in the California and the um and the easygoing lifestyle as the predominant factors in happiness when in fact there are many other you know uh, less publicized aspects of happiness that midwesterners enjoys like low crime safety from the earthquakes etc marketers so use focusing uh, effect also called as focusing illusion on consumers by convincing them of the necessary features of a product or service politicians too use this so use focusing to exaggerate the importance of particular issue so this is kind of like a manipulation because <laughs> it's actually an illusion so um you must learn all of this guys because this is like relevant in today's society so you can use this you can utilize this this is free you know you can practice it the key takeaway for this is that to combat this effect it is important to remember to keep perspective Look at problems from many angles and weigh several factors before making a decision. The downfall of focusing effect is that it can lead to mistakes in predicting future outcomes. If you can avoid tunnel vision, you can improve your chances of making a sound choice. Over to you now. Have you experienced some of the psychological effects before? So I think that's all of it, guys. Let me let me run through this first. Wait long. Focusing effect yeah so we're done guys so it's a bit long i know and you must understand that our lectures 
um, in order to gain something from this, uh, I I kind of like finish topics when it's really relevant and there's a thing that you really need to gain from it. We, we, with both of us. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I hope you do like our uh, subject for today. So, thank you guys for listening and thank you for helping me make this world a better place for all of us and for the future generation. Wait lang. So our affirmation for today is that I have a superhuman brain. So yeah. You're so very special.